There's an ancient Chinese curse which says, may you live in interesting times. And we had them in the 60s. We have them now, too, obviously. It hasn't stopped. But it was an extremely chaotic, difficult time and, and a very fertile ground for picking up metaphoric drama ideas. I think our writers captured a lot of those ideas extremely well. They were very sensitive to what was going on at the time and uh, tried very much to bring to bear in Star Trek and our 23rd century stories, stories that had to do with something that was happening on Earth today that people could recognize. It is obvious the most simple-minded that Loki is of an inferior breed. The obvious visual evidence, Commissioner, is that he is of the same breed as yourself. Are you blind, Commander Spock? Well, look at me. Look at me. You're black on one side and white on the other. I am black on the right side. Loki is white on the right side. All of his people are white on the right side. Do you remember the 20th century brush wars on the Asian continent? Two giant powers involved, much like the Klingons and ourselves. Neither side felt that they could pull out? Yes, I remember. It went on bloody year after bloody year. Well, what would you have suggested? One side arm its friends with an overpowering weapon? Mankind would never have lived to travel space if they had. What set Star Trek apart, I think, was the fact that we could tell almost any story we wanted to under the guise of science fiction. NBC censorship was uh, fairly strong at the time, and other shows could not, for instance, tell stories about the war in Vietnam. You couldn't tell stories about political issues. You couldn't tell stories about the kind of human issues that were creating riots in cities and, the kind of, and riots on college campuses. Uh, Star Trek could. Star Trek could slip it by under the guise of, hey, it's happening on another planet, guys. <laughs> and we did. The drug lights are workers, Captain. Oh, surely you must be aware of that. They mine xenite for shipment, till the soil. Those things cannot be done here. In other words, they perform all the physical toil necessary to maintain stratus. That is their function in our society. But they are not allowed to share its advantages. How can they share what they do not understand? Doctor, you insist on applying human standards to non-human cultures. I remind you that humans are only a tiny minority in this galaxy. There are certain absolutes, Mr. Spock, and one of them is the right of humanoids to a free and unchained environment. The right to have conditions which permit growth. Another is their right to choose a system which seems to work for them. This isn't life. It's stagnation. Now tell me, Commander, what is data? I don't understand. What is he? A machine. Is he? Are you sure? Yes. You see, he's met two of your three criteria for sentience, so what if he meets the third? Consciousness in even the smallest degree. What is he then? I don't know. Do you? Do you? Well, consider that in the history of many worlds, there have always been disposable creatures. They do the dirty work. They do the work that no one else wants to do because it's too difficult or too hazardous. And an army of data is all disposable. You don't have to think about their welfare. You don't think about how they feel. Whole generations of disposable people. He's talking about slavery. I think that's a little harsh. I don't think that's a little harsh. I think that's the truth. But that's a truth that we have obscured behind the comfortable, easy euphemism. Property. But that's not the issue at all, is it? You Federation types are all alike. You talk about tolerance and understanding, but you only practice it towards people who remind you of yourselves. Because you disapprove of Ferengi values, you scorn us, distrust us, insult us every chance you get. Quark, I don't have to stand there and defend myself. Tell me, Commander, would you allow your son to marry a Ferengi female? I never thought about it. Exactly my point.
been and always shall be your friend. Live long and prosper. the souls I have encountered in my travels. His was the most human. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Row. Merrily, 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 gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. merrily. Like, come on, Spock. Why didn't you jump in? I was trying to comprehend the meaning of the words. It's a song, you green-blooded Vulcan. You sing it. The words aren't important. What's important is that you have a good time singing it. Oh, I am sorry, Doctor. We'll be having a good time. God, I liked him better before he died. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. Fascinating. You have an efficient intellect, superior physical skills, no emotional impediments. There are Vulcans who aspire all their lives to achieve what you've been given by design. You are half human. Yes. Yet you have chosen a Vulcan way of life. I have. In effect, you have abandoned what I have sought all my life. For 34 years, I have endeavored to become more human, to grow beyond my original programming. Still, I am unable to grasp such a basic concept as humor. This emotion chip may be the only answer. What? I believe this beverage has produced an emotional response. Really? What are you feeling? I am uncertain. Because I have had little experience with emotion, I am unable to articulate the sensation. Emotion? I'll explain later. Ooh. Well, it looks like he hates it. Yes. That is it. I hate this. Dan, I think the chip is working. Oh, yes. I hate this. It is revolting. More? Please. Welcome aboard, Captain. The Starship Enterprise was a metaphor for Starship Earth. And when you saw the bridge of the Enterprise, you saw the makeup of all of the various kinds of people that populate the Starship Earth. But the real statement made by that weekly exposure to that pluralism was that that was our strength, that we have to recognize that diversity not as a problem or uh, something that's going to divide us, but as the very thing that makes it possible for us to survive. And by working as a team, by tapping the best in us, we can move forward and live long and prosper. All I have.
desk is a tall ship and a star to steer by. Melville, John Mayfield. Are you sure about that? I am well versed in the classics, Doctor. Then how come you don't know row, row, row your boat? <laughs> Course heading, Captain. Second start of the right. And straight on till morning.